Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Well, in the last two years, something extraordinary has been happening in Ghana. And I'm going to show you a photo of that vehicle that you see right there. Well, some global vehicle manufacturers have been flying down to Ghana mainly to meet with President Ekufado. And what is it they're doing? They're expressing interest in setting up right here in Ghana. Manufacturing plan, that's what we're talking about. Well, this could be a major boost for the country's push to address the high unemployment situation. So let's share with you a little bit of information about the companies we're talking about. Well, there's been, we've known about uh, Volkswagen, uh, VW, that's a, the German company. We've also heard about Sinotruck, that's a Chinese um, company. We also know about Nissan, that's a Japanese company. This afternoon, well, yesterday I must say, Suzuki, Toyota, and their distributors here in the country, CFAO, were also at the presidency, where we know that they also originate from Japan. They've also been meeting uh, with President Ekufuado. Well, what is it that Ghana is going to have? A booming auto industry? That is the big question. But how do we harness um, this? As I indicated already, VW has been here, Sinotruck, and of course, Nissan are working to set up their manufacturing plant uh, here in Ghana. Well, yesterday, again, one of the world's leading vehicle manufacturers. Toyota, you know, Ghanaians love Toyota. They led a consortium that's also made up of themselves, Suzuki and CFAO. Well, that brings the number to uh, the number of such companies looking to come into this country to four. Well, what's the attraction? We'll find out when we get to speak to the trade ministry. We'll also get to hear from Imani Africa on what to do to ensure that the country can and is able to take full advantage of that investment flow. Dr. Kobi Mensa is a branding expert from the University of Ghana Business School. He'll share with us what we need to do to give the country the sort of branding that will give any vehicle buyer anywhere in the world the feeling that a vehicle they bought from Ghana is of the highest quality. Well, first, let's bring you except of the meeting at the Jubilee House yesterday. Koyote Suzuki is general manager, the Middle East and Africa for Suzuki Motor Corporation. Suzuki is producing 3.3 million vehicles. And all of our vehicles are small, uh, so-called compact vehicles. The engine capacity is less than 1.6 liter. And... Uh, we also we have a strength in uh, production in India. Uh, now our production in India is over 1.8 million vehicles. More than half of our world production is India. So we are producing affordable, uh, reliable, <coughs> safe, and very fuel efficiency vehicles. And uh, uh, it is well accepted by Indian people our market share is over 50% in India. And uh, our journey in India started 36 years ago. We had the joint venture with Indian government and started the production of compact vehicles. Now it grew up to over 1.8 million vehicle production. And uh, I'm stationed in India, and my mission is to find out next India in the continent of Africa. Uh, we firmly believe next growth will come here in Africa, and, but we need to find out right place to be partnered with uh, the manufacturing and uh, uh, distribution uh, after sales of our vehicles. And uh, uh, Suzuki is partnered with Toyota Tsusho or in the continent of Africa. Uh, we are working together in 26 countries right now, and we are expanding uh, the number of countries. And actually, MD of uh, CFAO Ghana, Mr. Paul Fernandez, used to be MD of uh, DRC, and we worked together in that country also. And uh, we came to know from Toyota Tsusho that the uh, Ghanaian government is planning to introduce new automotive policy. And we heard it from Toyota Tsusho executives who made a visit here last month. So we are highly interested in participating in such an uh, initiative made by the Ghanaian government. We wish to start production here, to expand it uh, and grow it, is our wish. 
So later on, we'll have a meeting uh, with a, a ministry and uh, a minister and his uh, <coughs> members to learn more details about the automotive policy. So that's one of the representatives, Masafumi Yamashita, also represents Toyota Tusho Corporation. He was also there as well. Uh, we, Toyota Tusho Corporation and CFAO, has the uh, largest automotive distribution network in Africa and also have uh, ambition to contribute and support to uh, further development in African countries. Actually, our divisions, uh, the vision is with Africa and for Africa. And this time, uh, we uh, commi commit to work together with Suzuki Motor Corporation for the further development in the automotive industry here in Africa as a strategic partner in Africa. So you just had reps from Toyota and then Suzuki. So what's really the catch here? What's the attraction? President Kufado seems to give this hint. The auto policy which will give incentives for setting up in Ghana. Here are the presidents now. The news you brought here. Well, sincere apologies for that one, but we'll bring you that uh, the president's response uh, as far as policy direction for this is concerned subsequently. But let's begin the conversation as I, I indicated. I said that we'll be joined by Dr. Kobi Mensa, who's a brand expert. He's also a lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. He's joining us via Skype. Uh, Dr. Kobi Mensa, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Okay, well, it looks like we've lost Dr. Kobi Mensa, but one person I'm also expecting to join us in this conversation is Kofi Bento. Kofi Bento is Vice President for Imani Africa. Uh, we'll be trying to get him on Skype as well. We're also hoping to get the Trade Ministry on this conversation. Um, as and when we have them, we'll keep the conversation going. But just so you know, so far, these are the companies that have expressed interest um, in, in, in the Ghanaian auto industry. They're looking to set up manufacturing plants here. And a lot of people have said that, well, we need to take advantage of this. But how do we position ourselves to take advantage of all of these? Now, so far, those are the companies. VW, that's Volkswagen, uh, the German company. It is interesting, by the way, because Ge that, that German company, Volkswagen, has had its own problems in, in, in Europe, especially in Germany, where they are treated in uh, emission tests, etc. What will be their story once they come here? to Africa, once they come here to Ghana, what are the areas that Ghanaians need to, the Ghanaian authorities need to be careful, uh, need to be careful about? I mean, what are some of the things that Ghana needs to insist upon, knowing that even in the European system where monitoring and, che and, monitoring and checks are very stringent, they manage to cheat emission tests somehow. This actually caused them a lot and they had to uh, withdraw most of their cars. There's Sinotrack as well, which is a Chinese company looking to come into the country. There is Nissan. A lot of Ghanaians love Nissan. There are a lot of Nissan vehicles on our road. The idea is that once they come into the country, it makes it very easier for us. We, have also, know, we also know that Toyota is coming on board. Toyota is big again in Ghana. There you see, you have a Dr. Kobi Mensah who has just joined me um, in that video wall there. We're going to kick start the conversation. Well, Doc, thank you very much this afternoon. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm not bad at all. So let's have this conversation. I mean, we're just hearing yesterday that Suzuki and Toyota, you know, went together with CFAO, which is their uh, local partners, so the Jubilee House, and they're basically expressing interest in setting up a manufacturing base right here in the country. I mean, you are a brand expert. A lot of people have said that um, we have Kantanka, but there are times that people have basically done nothing but mock the brand. Sometimes they even feel like their name is funny. What really should we be looking at in terms of branding? Should we just, because it's an already established company, Suzuki, Toyota, uh, should Ghana be pushing to get its own branding in there somehow? Right, but thanks for, uh, for the question. I mean, when it comes to branding, and uh, uh, obviously branding is not only the name. You know, we are talking about the most important part of the, the brand. It's about the delivery, whether the product actually put up. 
would actually satisfy the main purpose that we make. Which means that if the cars take the data are actually the market, you know, the market is looking at how they can deliver the purpose that they have actually emerged from. So it's not necessarily in the net per se, of whether the Ghanaian market, including employee, you know, its management, is a brand of car that it's a car that actually satisfies. But what we know, when you have two already established companies, you know, like Toyota, like Suzuki, uh, coming in, and these are names of in individuals, I mean, people who own these companies, people who started these companies, they've been branded as such. Um, should Ghana just want to go along, that is, if they, they start operation, should Ghana just go along with some of these names, or will it be necessary to uh, push a certain agenda, a certain Ghana agenda with this uh, uh, proposal? Well, remember, these are established brands, as you said. Yeah. Like, we don't know how they are coming in, but that they are coming in as a trend, but they actually have been owned, you know, uh, a branch, the mother. Uh, so, naturally, it's an opportunity to decide what the name they should call them. You know, so, people shall decide that they want to do this African. Yeah, so, we cannot expect it. However, if you actually look at you know, the model that is up, these markets actually expand abroad. Most of them, they go with the parent brand that have the sub actually is, is, is named maybe with the flavor of that particular uh, they've been. So we have plans in England. So uh, they have plans elsewhere. They have plans in South Africa. Don't, you know, necessarily give it a different other than a established brand that they have. Perhaps they're going to go the same way as they have extended to us. So want okay. to name it up. And you know, they would want to name it again. Just in brand, only that the make you know, will be done in this country, but not necessarily. Mm. Well, look, the sound is not uh, 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 as would have would have it be. But if I'm following what you're saying, you're basically saying that these are already established companies. I mean, it doesn't look like there's much that Ghanaians can do as far as. Uh, naming or branding this already established uh brands but you know when the 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 product is coming from for example from the uk from from england from uh the united states of america people seem to have a certain perception of these um uh, uh product will, will will we be able to position ourselves so that without necessarily having to ride on the back of these brands, people will accept the brand and say, this is made in Ghana. It is Toyota made in Ghana. Correct. That's where we must focus on in terms of brand. It's not necessarily the name of the hmm. Now, remember when, you know, we used to, let's say that when the Indian army goes abroad in terms of you know, we have this popular understanding and to the best. You know, although we are not the powerful in the world, they say our soldiers are the most you know, disciplined, and yeah. skillful. That also can be transferred into the auto industry, which we call the country of If the world knows that Ghana has very difficult, if they know that Ghana has very skilled workforce, that transfer us and it means for this delivery, you could have confidence in that. The leverage on these hmm. is kind of established image about Then, of course, you could have to show that the cars made in Ghana, cars so branded, would be accepted by the world. But if the skip and the discipline level is not there, then I'm afraid, you know, people. So in other sectors of the of the of the, of the um, so I think we must allow and stop make Ghana as dis disciplined with a skill who will be able to you know, make sure having a very acceptable you know path. 
What, what Dr. Kobimensa, I'd like to reiterate what you said just so uh, to help uh, my viewers because the sound wasn't that, uh, again, what would like. Um, so, so what Dr. Kobimensa is basically doing is that he's uh, raising the army anal analogy. He says that if you look at the Ghana Armed Forces, uh, the Ghana Armed Forces and the way that they operate, a lot of people, I mean, we're not the best when it comes to uh, army drills, when it comes to uh, capacity and resources, but Ghana has a reputation in terms of the way uh, our, our men in uniform behave, especially when they go on peacekeeping mission, that if we want to apply or attach the same level of discipline, that could go a long way to help us in terms of how we can actually stand on our own without necessarily riding on the back of these already made brands. But that we can say Toyota made in Ghana, and it does have the same, uh, uh, the same you know, respect that we could leverage on that. Doc, because of the sound, we'll have to end the conversation here. But sincerely, thank you so much for joining us with your perspective on this. Dr. Kobi Mensa thank is you, a Mark. right, thank you. Is a is a brand analyst with the University of Ghana Business School, helping us with his perspective. We're hoping to get the Ministry of of, of uh, Trade to find the Trade Ministry to find out what really is happening. What is the plan? Because we saw we heard about this last year. I mean, we heard about uh, um Sino truck last year. This year we're hearing about three or so more. Really, what is the plan and um, how is the plan going to be effective? So far, we've seen all of them come to the, uh, to, the, to the Jubilee House to meet with the president, but we're yet to see anything happening on the ground. And that's what a lot of people are eager to find out uh, about. So we're hoping to get the ministry to get us that information. We've not been successful at this moment, but we really need to move on. We're also hoping to get uh, the uh, think tank, Imani Africa, to find out from them what they thought as far as policy is concerned. Policy that will help us create jobs for our unemployed youth, as well as policy that can direct the business model to make sure that Ghana is well positioned to make the most out of this uh, business, really. But it's not too late. As time goes along, we'll certainly be looking out for this conversation and we'll bring you those perspectives as and when we have it. But thank you.